Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Pentecost Sunday worship. This is a deanery-wide service, and I'm so thrilled for all of our clergy who have offered to take part. I will be co-officiating today with the Reverend David Coffin, and we will be from St. Andrew's Church here in Bishop Sauls. Uh, we're pleased that Miss Claire Foss from the parish of Botwood will be providing an anthem for us following our sermon from the Reverend Moses Tucker. But without further ado, I invite you to still your hearts now, and I welcome Reverend David to lead us off in our service this morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service of morning prayer for Pentecost Sunday. If you're following along in the Beast Book of Alternative Services, we begin on page 45. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We pray together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. The service continues with the Jubilate on page 49. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Reverend Cindy Graham will now read the first reading. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 104, beginning at verse 25. Yonder is the sea, and great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the leviton that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in the season. And when you give to them, they gather it up. And when you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever and may the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live, and I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and praise the Lord. This has been the word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the sermon of the spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to 
each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and as many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's still a few people out there. Streets are much emptier than usual this time of year, and the government have eased up on their restrictions, but we're no closer to getting started with our mission. I mean, how long has it even been, guys? We've been stuck in here, what, 40 days? 50? Feels like 10 or 11 weeks. <sighs> Who even knows anymore? <sighs> I doubt it'll get any better anyway. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it, but it's probably just going to get worse. Can't really believe half what they're saying on the news now anyway. It's hardly worth even starting the mission. So why do you leave it to us anyway? Oh, knock it off, Tom. You know this is just a little setback. Besides, he did say he was going to send a specialist to come and help us. He, um, the word he used was it an advocate. He said he was using he was going to send us an advocate, someone to really get our public speaking on par with his. I mean, he was so good at talking to the crowds, and I mean us, we we got a lot of work to do. But he said there was going to be an expert coming, so watch yourself. Don't be such don't be such a downer, Tom. I feel like we could really use it, too. I mean, somebody to really fire us up and get us going, you know what I mean? A real wind beneath our wings. I mean, we can't expect to attract people with a big picnic and bottomless grub every time, with a little open-air TED Talk every now and again. I mean, for goodness sake, we're not even allowed to gather outside now. Inside, outside, anywhere. We can't gather anywhere. So how are we supposed to get this word out? Well, we can't just sit here. Let's make some good use of our time. Spitball some ideas. Let's just see what sticks. There's no idea too crazy. Nothing is off the table. So, come on, let's go. Alors, cette idée de la bouffe a bien attiré la foule après de la colline. Et si c'était à emporter en bordure de roue, avec une brochure contenant notre message? What? Es kann schwierig sein, so viele Diäten und Islam klügen, um sich sorgen zu machen. Wie wäre es in Video online zu stellen? Wait, 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 no, no, no. Wait, what? All right, wait, just, just hang on. What is going on here? How is this even happening? I mean, you... Oh, oh, guys, guys, I got it. Uh, he, 
<laughs> just listen, because I think... And that's what the day of Pentecost would look like if there were in the middle of today's modern pandemic. <laughs> kind of. But nevertheless, it is kind of funny to think about how they were all holed up in a room trying to figure out what to do next, all stuck together, social distancing, all that good stuff. And at the same time, they had something to do and a message to bring. Isn't that an interesting thought? And this is the day of Pentecost. This is Sunday of Pentecost. And even on that day that we commemorate on this Sunday with the readings we share and with the many things we do, there were many voices and understandings of the divine at the time. I mean, it wasn't just Peter and the boys. There was a lot of different things that were being understood about the divine at the time. You had different cultures, different languages, different peoples. God bless whoever read the gospel this morning in uh, all the churches around because they had the long list of folks that they had to name from cultures and places. They're not always the easiest ones to do. Mesopotamians is a hard one. But think about it. All those places, all those traditions, all bringing their experiences of God. And in the midst of all that, the apostles, imbued by the Spirit with languages to speak and inspired words to say, brought the teachings of Jesus Christ out to the masses, often using the existing culture or understandings of the divine to help teach and express Jesus to other people. I mean, Paul was great for it. That was like his bread and butter. Just look at Acts 17 from uh, the sixth Sunday of Easter when he starts speaking to the Athenians about the unknown God. And he uses that to explain to them what this means. Now, look at what we have today. We have multi-denominations of Christianity speaking to a current generation. We have a variety of ways to access and study the scriptures and the history that surrounds how they came to be. Some are simple. Some are deep profound and complicated. Some are like popcorn. They're bite-sized and entertaining. And some are as old as fine wine. And as with all things studied or appreciated over hundreds of years, these different expressions, interpretations, and ideas of the church and Christianity have popped up all over the place. And each comes with their own experiences, their own cultures, their own languages, and so on. And even more so now, with this time of physical distancing, bringing with it a digital renaissance of sorts, found through so many Christian churches simultaneously trying to share worship, to provide outreach outline, online. And with all of this comes the opportunity to tune into many ideas and interpretations of the Christian faith and the church. Different preaching styles, different music, music different traditions, and so on along with the ability to, you know, click around, something like uh, channel surfing back in the day, or eating out of uh, Mall's food court. You have choices galore. But lots of variety does open up to new points of view. Lots of variety opens up to new ideas, new discussions, but also new challenges, because it challenges what we're comfortable with. Don't say it don't. It challenges our idea of what status quo is, the way that we see things as the norm in our churches. And some of these challenges we've already encountered, as is part of the Anglican way of things. Let, let's see if you recognize any of these. <clears throat> Guitars and drum kits versus organs and choirs. Now, right away, I can hear some people say, why not both? But listen to me. High Mass Eucharist, High Mass, bells, smells, the works, versus prayer and praise services, maybe outside. Clergy, wearing so much fine drapery, they could be their own fabric store. Versus clergy in a t-shirt and jeans with a wireless mic, a fog machine, strobe lights, and so on. This is nothing new. These dichotomies aren't new by any means. But they were always in different buildings. They were always in different traditions. They are always in another house. They are always in somebody else's backyard. But now we have access to them in this sudden flush of online church that has ramped up massively. It gives a flood of new media and experiences for us to see. And while lots of us, particularly in the Anglican church, are basically discussing and juggling theological and liturgical ways to reach people, 
such as digital church and how to do it, how to record this stuff, uh, how to do distanced outreach. How do we reach people when we can't physically reach them? Digital communion or dinner table Eucharist. These are some things we got to talk about and so on. But in the midst of all that, what can get lost is the root of it all. In the midst of these conversations, the root of what we're talking about. The actual breath that gives life to much, if not all, of the words of our faith. That which Jesus himself promised he would send. As he said in the gospel for the Feast of the Ascension, that's Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And see, he said, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And look at today's gospel. Even the passage from Acts, both of them, receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus says to them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what we're talking about. The Holy Spirit, sometimes called Hagia Sophia in the Greek, which means holy wisdom. It's remembered in our reading from Acts today for Pentecost to fire up conversation, to move the message of God from Jesus Christ out to all parts of the world, to move and fire us up in our faith so that we don't wind up like these frightened apostles stuck staring off after Jesus ascending or hiding in a house together. I mean, not because of a pandemic, of course, but, you know, we can't be hiding out of fear of what people will think or do if we don't speak up about our faith. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to expressing faith, it's not just about speaking. That's where many of our problems lie. Listening is twice as important. Y'all heard the saying, you got two of these and one of this. So you should listen twice as much as you should speak, sure. And yes, it's about listening to each other to hear our differences, to hear our points of view, our experiences, all of those things, yes. But most importantly, most important of all, it's to hear the holy in all that we say and that we do. A thesis entitled, The History of Churches During Pandemics and How They Managed to Stay Open, Sounds big, sounds interesting, might even be informative. But that would be useless if it wasn't framed in line where the Holy Spirit leads us, which is at the root of everything. And in the midst of all of our interpretations, all of our experiences, our denominations, our traditions, that has not changed. The root of what the Spirit is doing and where he's going has never changed. The crux of the movement of the Spirit has always been to reach people beyond restrictions, beyond barriers, beyond languages, creeds, locations, or traditions. It's all about speaking directly to the person right where they are, to show them who Jesus Christ is, to teach them the two main tenets he commanded that were the most important Upon them hang all the law and the prophets. To invite people into a deeper discussion and learning and relationship. And to remind there is room in all of our community for all of them. And the approach is never the same way every time. Paul lays that plain right here in 1 Corinthians today. Chapter 12, verses 4 to 7, he says this. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is in the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Loads of ways of saying, of doing, of being the church family. To borrow from uh, the band Queen, a song that they sing, One Vision. One man, one goal, one mission, one heart, one soul, just one sore loser. One flash of light, one God, one vision. Do you remember the old children's hymn? You in your small corner and I in mine. 
It's a funny thing about trying to stay in corners on a round planet such as ours, because it's impossible. For us to be the church, for us to be Christians, we have to be listening more than we're telling in order to understand the many ways the Spirit is speaking to and through us. The Spirit is an amazing communicator. We're just speakers. Just like on that day of Pentecost, a new thing is happening right now in this explosion and access to the word online and everywhere. And it will take time. It'll take patience. It'll take exuberance. It'll take creativity to help make it all work. And in the midst of it all, it takes us being a lot of different things. It takes us to be willing. It takes us willing to be to, to listen, willing to listen and to speak, willing to ask questions and to hear answers, willing to think and to move beyond the usual and the comfortable and to try something new. We couldn't have even started this whole endeavor if people weren't interested in starting something new on that very day we celebrate today. We have to be willing to love God enough to move beyond our corners and to love our neighbors beyond any barrier we could possibly make. The apostles were gifted with a new language to reach beyond culture or creed to share who Jesus was. With all that we have been gifted since then, the many ways of communicating we have now, we have no excuses. We have no obstacle too big to keep us from meeting people right where they are and to share and to listen for the holy. I pray you hear that holiness today. Let's pray. Perplexing God of Pentecost, you infuse us with your spirit, urging us to vision and to dream. May the gift of your presence find voice in our lives, that our babbling may be transformed into discernment, and that the flickering of many tongues, many lights of unquenchable fire of compassion be made for all and justice for all. In your name we humbly pray. Amen. Worship continues now if you're following along on page 52 of the Book of Alternative Services. On page 52, as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hello from Holy Trinity Church, Grand Falls, Windsor. Reverend Robin Trevor's here today. Good morning, everyone. I'm doing the litany on page 123, the Holy Spirit litany. Let us pray to God, the Holy Spirit, saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, counselor, be with the leaders of our nations and of our communities, that they would be governed by your Holy Spirit and the directions that they would take would bless and keep us safe and sound. And touch the lips that we may proclaim your word. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, power from on high. We pray for those that are not well. We pray for the sick of our church and community. We pray for those who are grieving. Heavenly Father, be with them and make your presence known to them. Make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God. Give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth. And we pray for an end of this pandemic and a vaccination to come quickly by the power of God and strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our collect for today, almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In gathering our prayers into one, we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit walk, rest, and remain with you this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you to our deanery clergy for taking part in this endeavor. I think this went over really well. If you've got any comments on how it all was, like don't hesitate to let any of us know. This is on all of our parish social media platforms. You'll find it there. And uh, you know we all recorded it differently, so that's why everything sounds different. But that's the joy of it all. I saw it shared on Facebook recently that you know, no matter how we do our worship, whether it's a shaky camera, whether we're not entirely comfortable with what we're doing, that's the perfume we pour on Jesus' feet. It is our everything. 
that we offer to each and every one of you. So don't forget for all of your parishes, stay tuned when the offering drop-off times are for your respective congregations. On behalf of our entire deanery, we thank you for your continued witness and support in all matters financial with your offerings. We've been able to keep everything running so, so smoothly, and it's all thanks to you guys. So on behalf of all of us, have a wonderful day, stay safe, and may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Take care. <laughs>